Hello folks! Today is a very, very significant day in the history of the Coverage Project, and before I get into all that fun stuff, first I think we should take the time to have a little bit of a celebratory feast. Alright everyone, well, we have a great view in front of us, and even a greater story to celebrate. We're right next to the Mississippi River. This is a grand river encompassing a long length, going through so many states in the center of the country. Now last we saw this great and mighty river was in St. Louis back in the March through the Midwest several months ago, almost a year ago actually. This is the same river. It's just some few hundred miles downstream, a lot closer to its mouth where it ends up. So let's get a peek at what we're about to feast on. That is a po' boy. And if you have been around the south, you will know exactly where a po' boy originated. So the story goes that down in New Orleans, a sandwich was developed and invented to accommodate the economic needs of the people. This sandwich was called a po' boy, an abbreviation or whatever you might call it of a poor boy's sandwich. And instead of expensive food, this sandwich was filled with cheap ingredients so that the po' boys could eat. Nowadays, po' boys are a lot more expensive. This sandwich in particular cost me a little bit more than I would have wanted to spend on a sandwich, but that's all right. Take a look at a po' boy. Now although this po' boy may look like a normal sandwich, what's inside is a bit different. Instead of a chicken or a beef, this is catfish, a type of fish very local to the state we're in. So let's see what a po' boy tastes like, you know? Oh my goodness, that is delicious. You know, it's not just catfish that goes along. I think po' boys can be filled with so many different things from general sliced meat, to shrimp, to oysters, to other types of fish. And it's a lot about customization with a po' boy. In addition, the bread doesn't seem like a traditional Italian roll. The bread seems more similar to like a French baguette roll, but it's also good with the lettuce, tomato, bread, the catfish that's fried, and the sauce all coming together. What a medley for a tasty meal. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the po' boy. That was an amazing treat. Get yourself a po' boy at Rocco's, right outside where we are. As I told you all the story, the po' boy comes from New Orleans. Between that and Mississippi River, are you catching the hints yet? We are in a new state, and not just a new state. This is a very historic day here for the Coverage Project. And the reason why is because we have hit our 25th state. And given that there are 50 states in the United States, that means we have traveled to 50% of the states in the United States. We are officially halfway. Oh, we're halfway there. Yeah, I don't think we're living on a prayer yet, thankfully, but you get the idea. Welcome to Louisiana, the Pelican State. I'm really noticing as we go along these southern states and try the local food, it really fattens you up. Something about the way southern food is made, maybe it's because everything's fried, everything's full of sugar, but it really is tasty. It's hard to just avoid that. Plus it's the experience of trying all these foods. So Po' Boy is just another example of all the food that's really gaining me some weight on this southeastern tour. But anyway, yes. The Po' Boy is from New Orleans, but we're not in New Orleans today. Today, we are in Louisiana's capital city. As many of you may know, Louisiana is famous for its French heritage. As the first French settlers and traders and explorers were 
navigating their way up this mighty Mississippi River. They came to a location along its banks where they found a red stick. Some say it was a boundary marker covered in animal blood, but it was some sort of out of the ordinary thing they saw. And for that reason, they named this general area Baton Rouge. And that means red stick in French. A lot of place names are named for weird reasons in history. So as this Native American boundary marker denoting the edge of some tribe, this red stick area eventually was chartered as the capital city of Louisiana, the state, after the Americans got hold of this territory. And thus, today, Baton Rouge, or as we say it today, Baton Rouge, it is the second most populous city in Louisiana after, of course, the Big Easy New Orleans. There's a lot we're going to be seeing today in this capital city, as we usually do with a lot of these capital cities. They're more than just a seat of government. They also have a culture of their own. So here in Baton Rouge, we're gonna have a lot of fun. So let's begin our grand adventure today. As we explored, back a long time ago in St. Louis. The Mississippi River, it is a huge river. It's a big reason why America got a big early foothold as a economic superpower, because they were able, the country that is, as a whole, they were able to unite the country and all of its territory through this grid-like pattern of rivers and tributaries and smaller rivers, and they all stem here at this mighty Mississippi River. As you might see on a normal day anywhere in a city along the Mississippi River, you're going to see these huge vessels, mostly for trade and economic purposes. Some are docked here, others are going along. You might also see some fun steamboats, hearkening back to the days when steam power was all the rage. You know, now that I think about it, as far south as we are, this might be the westernmost point we've discovered here on the Coverage Project. This might be a little bit more west longitudinally than St. Louis. Let me just say, that'll be surpassed soon enough, but here's to New Horizons. Well, it's always nice taking our little glimpse into part of one of the largest, longest navigable river systems in the world. We still got a whole city of Baton Rouge to explore. Let's go do that. Would you believe me if I told you that this castle-looking thing was once the state capitol building of Louisiana? Yeah, that's right. Either we stepped into a fairy tale storybook or traveled through a time machine to end up looking at a structure like that, so preserved and yet so old and filled with design. It's nothing short of a miracle that this survived, or at least most of it survived, through the Civil War and was used as the state capitol building until the 1930s. Louisiana, come on, you had it made. Why couldn't you keep your state capitol building, that one, instead of building a whole new one? It's unnecessary. Look at the beauty of this. Anyway, this might be my favorite capitol building of all the capitol buildings we have seen. This has got to be number one. Let's go inside. Let's see how the inside is for a castle, it's gotta be grand. This place is just immaculate. How amazing was that? A beautiful, elegant work of architecture right here in Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge was selected and designated as the state capital to give sort of a counterbalance because New Orleans had a little too much influence. The state of Louisiana made sure that Baton Rouge would have a little bit 
of the share of power. Sadly though, that is the historic state capital, not the modern state capital. Let's see how, as time passes, the architectural style of the house of this state's government has changed. Now this is today's Louisiana State Capitol building. And now why would you go from an exquisite castle to just another skyscraper looking thing? There's gotta be some reason, some rationale behind the change. And that change was catalyzed by Mr. Huey P. Long. Now if you are around in Louisiana, in the early 1930s, you knew exactly who this guy was. For most of Louisiana's history, it's been a very backwoods, impoverished place. Nothing but bayous and swamps and forests and farms all around. Nothing really major or developed. That was until Huey Long came along and attempted to change that. Tired of seeing all these other states around him across the country, holding the benefits of being a lot more developed. Huey Long decided to become governor and change Louisiana's fate and position in the American system. This man, once elected governor, decided to make some radical decisions for that time and age. He established an unprecedented amount of public works programs for the state of Louisiana. Schools, hospitals, public buildings sprung up all across the state, and this all together created thousands of jobs and new opportunities for ordinary Louisianans to take advantage of and maybe just maybe become a little bit more wealthy as a state. Most notably, Huey Long oversaw the construction of the modern Louisiana State Capitol building. Isn't that incredible? At 34 stories tall, this is the tallest Capitol building in the nation. And you can thank Huey Long for this achievement. Despite Huey Long's long list of accomplishments, it came at a cost of a lot of ethical accusations against the man as a politician. For the impressive and unprecedented amount of political power he gained while a politician, he is chastised as this dictatorial figure who had too much power. People across America, politicians and other citizens alike, observed the way he carried himself and the way he managed his office as a politician and felt that his tyrannical style would be a threat to the stability of the political nature of the United States. Especially so after he shared his desires and ambitions to go for the presidency. Ultimately, as Huey Long became an increasingly polarizing figure in the world of American politics. In 1935, right here in Baton Rouge, not only in Baton Rouge, but in the state capitol building, Huey Long was assassinated by a family member of a political enemy. Interesting political figure that political historians really like to talk about. Was he a tyrant? Was he just trying to do the best for the people of Louisiana. It's hard to really say it's exactly and only one of those two. But one thing's for sure, you could very well say that this Louisiana State Capitol building very much represents the idea of Huey Long trying to bring up the state of Louisiana from the bayous to modern developed society. So I didn't realize there was an observation deck that we could right now see. Oh my goodness, what a spectacular view. Look at this. There's the whole grand view. There's the Mississippi River. There's all the important buildings and in the distance you see this industrial sector of the city. 
Notice how everything is just flat here. No mountains or hills in sight here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Yup, and that is the park in which we were walking and talking about Huey Long. Not too far away from the commercial downtown area, you can really see all of Baton Rouge from the lofty peak of this state capitol building. To get the authentic picture of a region here, Louisiana, we have one more thing to do. We are walking through the outside of the LSU Rural Life Museum. Now, LSU, Louisiana State University, is based in Baton Rouge. And as part of their agricultural research center, they have a portion dedicated to showing what rural life was like back in the day to the public. Anybody who wants to stop by can do so, pay a little admission, and get a little taste of culture about what the life of someone living in Louisiana was like over 150 to 200 years ago. So, when you hear of the state of Louisiana, what do you think of? As mentioned before, Louisiana is a state characterized by a whole bunch of cultures. The Cajuns were here, a French-speaking people around Atlantic Canada who were expelled just a little bit before America got its independence. They escaped to what is now southern Louisiana, and that's why the region around southern Louisiana is known as Cajun country. The people from Acadia turned into the Cajuns, just one of many different cultures that inhabit Louisiana. We're not even talking about the natives, or the English, or the Spanish, or the French, or the Creoles, or the African Americans. All of those cultures combined make up a really big melting pot of Louisiana culture. So what else is there in Louisiana? I'm sure the nature is a big factor in everybody's mind of Louisiana. All the swamps and bayous, and of course the humid weather. And unfortunately, Louisiana is always seemingly in the news for whatever tropical storm hits the coast. Hurricanes and other cyclones, and then all the flooding that goes on. Sometimes it is hard to live in Louisiana. Louisiana culture is dominated by the culture of just New Orleans. You know, you have the biggest Mardi Gras celebration in the U.S. And then, of course, the legacy of jazz which originated there. It's one of a very, very small amount of states which don't use the county system, you know, the subdivisions of the state. They use parishes, coming from the culture of Europe, where they used parishes, primarily in France. And, of course, the culture of France goes into the culture of Louisiana. I mean, it was named for King Louis the 14th of France. There's a lot France has influenced into Louisiana's overall culture. All in all, I am very glad we could make Baton Rouge our debut location here in the Pelican State. We could have just gone to New Orleans, but I think too many people know about New Orleans. We could set aside that location for another time. I think the second most populous city in Louisiana deserves the first most important spot here on the coverage project. So, with that said, what a great day we had delving into the history and culture and lore of Louisiana all together. One more shout out to that Poe boy we tried at the beginning of the video. That was amazing. My first time ever trying a Poe boy, and I'm not displeased at all. Anyway, to end this video off, walk in right next to some beautiful agricultural fields under the hot Louisiana sun on this humid day right nearby Baton Rouge capital of the Pelican State more travels to come I will see you at the next location